<coughs> this is uh, the introductory lecture for the B paper, right? Some of you may have heard me, some of you may have never, never heard me. Some of you may have seen me, some of you may have never seen me. Never mind. I am the past president, one of the past presidents, a uh, president between the years 2013 and 2014. Right. 99% of the time, I am your friend. I am your friend. Your colleague. Which means, you can treat me like your friend, your colleague. Okay, you can stop me. No not the the single. What is the single there in the single in the capacity? Where is the single there in that? Right. I am your friend. 99% of the time only. For the balance 1%, I am the schoolmaster, which I am doing now. Schoolmasters punish people. Right? I punish those who don't obey instructions. So that is out of 1%, half a percent I punish you. Correct? I am the schoolmaster for the half a percent of your time. 99% I am your friend. What is single there in any? What? Single there in any? What? What is Manghan? Me Minister to single there in the injured in the Kohomad. They will again, what? Get a cut of the will again, the devil is in my time. What are they going to do? And the under the military. So I am your schoolmaster for half a second time. Which means I am going to punish you, which I am doing now. I quite understand that you have to come after work, so you get slightly late. I accommodate you. I give you a small punishment. That is, I ask you to come and sit in the first two rows. So you can hear me very well. Right? That's the first punishment. The second time, half a percent of the time, I am like a general. You know what a general is? Right? When the general says something, no questions can be asked from the general. He will ask you something and give you a command. That's the role of a general. Otherwise, things can't go on. 99% I am your friend. Out of the 1%, half a percent I am your schoolmaster. And the rest of the half percent I am your general. Got it? Understood? Understood? Yes. Ah, good. Why I tell you I am your friend is because you got to understand what I am saying. So therefore, if you, if you come here uh, thinking that I am going to teach you something, you are mistaken. You are going to learn something from me. Okay, you have to learn something from me. It's very easy to learn something from your friend. That's what we have been doing in, uh, throughout our lives. So, that's why I tell you I am your friend. You have learned something from me, not that I am going to teach you anything. Okay. So, today I am going to discuss, and this is the first lecture I think in this series. You all have applied for the B paper. Right? And, uh, I am going to tell you certain basic things about engineering and how the B paper is structured and how you must get prepared to face the B paper. Right? So that is my role today, your friend. Before getting anywhere, we have to know who is an engineer. <coughs> right? This is extracted from the Wikipedia. Now Wikipedia is a collection of thoughts and words. Uh, which are not necessarily 100% correct. Even you can add something and if they accept it, you can publish it in the Wikipedia. It's as flexible, flexible as that. But over the years, this has come to stay. So the engineer, the word engineer is defined in the Wikipedia like this. An engineer is a professional practitioner of engineering. And this is one of the most obvious statements. Concerned with applying scientific knowledge, mathematics, 
and ingenuity to develop solutions for technical problems. <coughs> engineers design materials, say civil engineers design concrete, structures, they do design structures, machines, mechanical engineers design machines. Mechatronics engineers design mechatronical uh, machine that has a lot of electronics in that, right? And systems. Most of us now design systems. If you don't design a system for a proper construction site, the construction will go haywire. Once I was in uh, Qatar, I was in a hotel, and just next to the hotel was a huge work site. So I used to just watch these people. I counted there were 37 tower cranes. 37. We are just, can you find it? Maybe the whole country of Sri Lanka, you have 37 tower cranes in one work site. And there were hordes and hordes of people working. And you could see from top, right, if they want to uh, use rebars, the rebars come dead on time. And everybody knows what to do with the rebars, where to stack them, how to extract them. While these are being stacked, people are using it. Right? So that is what we call designing systems. If the systems don't go haywire, everything goes haywire. Right? So we do design systems. While considering the limitations imposed by practicality, safety and cost. Practical safety and cost. I would also add the word environment. The word engineer is derived from the Latin root ingenium, meaning cleverness. So all of you are very clever people. All of you have become engineers. You are coming here to try to get one step uh, further. Are you clever guys? Are you clever? Yes. If you are clever, what do you do? You pat your own back. Come on, come on, come on. Back to back. Everybody, hurry! Hurry! Ha! Good. You patted your own back. What does it say? I am a clever guy. I am a clever guy. In fact, you all are clever people. Extremely clever people. If you don't, if not, you can't be engineers. That's for sure. If you are, if you think you're not clever, don't do paper B. Go and tell your wife or husband or parents, you are still under your parents. If you don't believe in your cleverness, right? Engineering is not your profession. You all are clever people, that's why you did all the exams very well and became engineers, it's not easy. I always tell, A level is the most difficult exam in the whole world. You passed the A level exam, you got qualified to be the in the engineering faculties, right? And you did an engineering course somewhere maybe. And if you have completed your engineering course, you are obviously clever. The engineers are grounded in applied sciences and their work in research and development is distinct from the basic research focus of scientists. Right? The work of engineers forms the link between scientific discoveries and the applications in red meet the, that meet the needs of the society. Once again, if you are not prepared to meet the needs of the society, Engineering is not your profession. There are some people, I have come across enough engineers who are not prepared to meet the needs of society. The, my advice to them is, please go and do something for yourself. If you are not willing to meet the needs of society, try to meet the inner need in yourself. What do you do? Change your clothes. Get on to a robe, go to a hermitage. Aranyakata gihilla, karuna, kalla, tamange, atma, abhiurdhya, sandha. 
manasika suya sadaha do some meditation and do something for the next world i am not saying meditation is bad i also do sometimes i try to learn meditation but that brings a wholeness in your life that's a different matter but if you are not prepared to do with the needs of society you must do something for yourself that will completely devote yourself for meditation and look after the next life right? that's the place for you now what is the difference between scientists and engineers it's written there engineers are grounded in applied science and the work in research and development is distinct from the basic research focus of scientists so if i ask uh, scientists tell me the weight of this a bottle of water right first the scientists will analyze all the elements in this uh, bottle of water including plastic the h2 and the label uh, what it is composed of even the print whether it's a lead or not they will compute everything they add the atomic uh, weight of each of these uh, atoms calculate the molecular weight and come out with an exact answer which nobody can dispute perhaps this scientist will tell me this is uh, 423.62507086923500 grams for an engineer what is the weight of this bottle right now what is the weight of this bottle 400 grams 400 grams that's good enough for me for a concreting engineer maybe uh, the last meter cube of concrete is good enough for a uh, for a mechanical engineer who is doing exact precision uh, machining maybe the second thou or uh, some kind of a thousandth of a millimeter or something is good for him those are tolerances for electrical engineer maybe the first decimal place or second decimal place depending on the units will be okay for us right but for science scientists there's only one exact solution we need scientists to tell us what is that exact solution and we engineers make it practical there was a central focus of engineering profession is the application of scientific knowledge to meet the needs of the society so we are in that pie the, the in between the two uh, circles we are a kind of a pie there what does it look like cyber cutting in cutting can i love to go to cyber cutting what does it look like the central piece the engineering what does it look like come on ah italy that's an italy what is italy italy is the common man's food is that so anybody can eat italy right it's a common man's food nobody will grumble eating it right so that's a common man's food so engineering is for the common man the engineers are they are for the common man right for no one else for the common people on the other hand we are human beings we are human beings so we have our own personality in us in our personality some of us are very creative very creative i have seen some engineers who can draw beautiful pictures very creative as some of us engineers are highly analytical if you don't have a good analytical mind you can't be engineers right that's why you all have become engineers so you are highly analytical some people and some of you are highly creative So how many of you are creative? Come on, come on, put your hands up. How many of you are creative? No one. No one. Market is creative, cutty, good at kinna. Full creative. My God, everyone is creative now. Who is analytical? Hands up. Come on. Now when I say hands up, no, no, me, he, he, this is not good, you know. These half-hearted hands up. as engineers 
If you know something, you must put your hand up like this. I want you to be counted. Right? Not half part is counted. If you are half part, that means you are sure of yourself. Okay. So most of us are creative, also most of us are analytical. Good. That's our human nature. For example, as engineers apply commercial software to solutions of engineering problems, the application of analytical skills per se may involve little or no creativity. Now we do, I am an electrical engineer, we do a lot of uh, electrical designs using uh, black box software boxes. Right? We put in a whole lot of data, get out a design, maybe uh, you can even get a CAD drawing, right? A uh, drawing that is uh, comes out of the machine. Is there any creativity in not? Hardly any creativity in not. Right? But you need the analytical skills. But you know that the, the moment that the results that are coming out, your intuitive brain tells you, no, 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 that tension can't be that high, that concrete can't be that uh, low, right? That uh, conductor size is not so good because your analytical mind is working. But hardly a creative mind is working, right? On the other hand, an engineer may design an ergonomic coffee space with very little analytical skills. How many of you know the word ergonomics? Put your hands up. Don't feel shy. If you feel shy, I told you I am your friend. You are not shy to ask a friend, right? So, how many of you know the word economics? How many of you do not know the word economics? No one knows. Is there anybody who knows the word economics? You know? You know? Please, please, come, come. Give a try, give a try. Come, 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 come. You know, right? You know? Come, come. Give it a try, give it a try. It doesn't matter. You are all friends. Come. I think I think I like in the room. Come, come, come. I want you to come here. Show your face. Don't be shy. You are engineers. First, tell your name from where you are. And come on. Tell your name from where you are and tell what you I'm think. Pratap, eh? Yeah, from? I'm from CGR. CGR? Yeah. What do you think, uh, Robin? Uh, I think the doing something that is uh, which is uh, easy. Easy for the people. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Give a round of applause. Come on. <laughs> the only guy who knew that. Okay, thank you. Pratap, right? Pratap. Ergonomics is doing something which is uh, easy for the person. Actually, I had the I had the Oxford Dictionary meaning. I I don't have it right now. You can design something where it is pleasing to the eye. It's pleasing for the people to work. In fact, this word ergonomics uh, arose from designing aircraft. Right? In aircraft, come on, Mr. 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 What were you told at the game? What were you told there? To you, that boy. He was the man? Yeah, he told me. He asked me to sit uh, somehow front. Not front, the first front two rows. First front two rows, huh? Come, come. I am sure you know the how to count one, two, three, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Then you sit there. Right. Uh, ergonomics means very easy and comfortable way of doing things. Right? So if you want to design an ergonomic office space, hardly any analytical skill comes into play. Right? You have to make it very pleasing to the eye, very, very easy for the people to work. Especially in aircraft designs, you have very limited space. Right? And you will make the passengers comfortable in that constricted air space. So you design aircraft for ergonomics. And the ergonomics is very much used in designing office spaces. Right? Okay. Now let's look at the engine from all these perspectives. So you put all these together. Right? You have the creativity, you have the analytical skills, you have the societal needs, you have the scientific knowledge. So we are engineers in that cluster. And we are always in that pile, the Italy, the common man's food. Nowhere else. We are in that. Okay? We are very much in that. Nowhere else. 
If you do not have enough scientific knowledge, you are somewhere here, you are not an engineer. If you are not prepared to work, uh, meet the needs of society, you are somewhere here, outside this well, you are not an engineer. Okay, got it. Now we have three subsectors, A, B, and C. Now let's see what this A, B, and C represent in us. There are certain characteristics that are in us. Sector A represents the intersection of purely analytical skills and talents with the engine within the engineering domain. So you have a lot of analytical talents still within the engineering domain. So you belong to the sector A kind of engineering. Right? This may be used to represent engineering science, the science of engineering and ability to model very complex systems. So all those who raise their hands with their analytical guys, you we need you to, to design very complex systems, model complex systems. We very often model things, right? Before you start analyzing. So these are the guys who, who, whom we need to model analytical, uh, very analytically and model things, right? and predict their response to various inputs under varying conditions. That's exactly what you do when you are operating a model, computer model, right? This segment of engineering has of course been the subject of intense development for the last half century and has benefited most directly from the availability of fast digital computers. I think when you came to the uh, IESL, there was a model of a uh, stuba. I thought it was what do you call that? Tuparame, but somebody told me it was Jetavanara. The tallest brick building in the world. Correct? The tallest brick building built when? I don't know how many centuries ago. I don't know. I'm not a historian. Maybe 150 centuries ago. Right? Or 15 centuries ago? So I don't know. 15 centuries ago? Maybe. I don't know. So there were engineers at that time who built brick construction so so long years ago. What is the difference between those engineers and today engineers? They may have easily taken 40 years to decide, maybe another 40 years to build. That Jetavana Arame or Tupara. Right? You guys are now capable of doing the design maybe within 4 minutes. 4 hours or 4 days at maximum maybe in the Mahathu you are telling you are asked to come and sit in the first 2 rows right so please obey the instructions given there I don't think you know understand uh, 1, 2, 3 1, 2, 3 1 and 2 not 3 ok right it is very irritating so next time anybody comes please give them a knock right on my behalf I can't be telling this over and over again. If you don't give a knock, I'll give you a knock. Right. So, when I was in the university about 40 years ago, we had only three computers in the whole country. One was in the CB, one was, sorry, one was in the university, one was in the People's Bank, and one was in the State Engineering Corporation. Only three computers. Huge computers. And believe me, that computer was about quarter of this room size, right? And we had to punch the programs in some cards and hand over the set of cards, give it to the system operator. He'll put it, sometimes he'll give you output in about two hours, three hours, half a day, two days. So now you can do that perhaps in a split second in your computer, in a split second. Right? So that is the level of developer that has taken place and that therefore has improved our analytical skills more and more. Recently I met a friend of mine, in fact my, my batchmate who came from US who is, he has 50 PhDs behind him, 50 PhDs students behind him. He is in the uh, leading edge of uh, IT and he told me the half life of IT systems today is how, how long? Half life. You know, all of you know half life, right? 
the usefulness of the, of the product becomes half when half life so the id systems the present is his, his uh, authority words what is the half life of a computer system today any guess any guess come on i want to talk then what is your guess am i talking to some dumb people are you all married how many of you are married i am sure your wife told me you all the katha karana gedare inna ad katha karana katta ho hagadi ta palla gedare gyana ara lecture ya gine kida katta ho hagadi inno ne e hulu ad your wife didn't tell you why you can't talk what is the half life of today uh, of uh, computer systems any guess come on anybody i would pick now somebody then for the half life of computer system today you don't know no answer you one who came last so i very good one half years is coming from an authority source we one half years half of our programs go out of use half life in other words right all the life type of the product becomes useless 50% dekha itna de rahe hain ne dekha itna de rahe hain dekha ki nahi de rahe hain right again 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 you don't understand the word two no kyun me two first two rows ka kyun hai correct sector c the intersection of our creative capacity with the engineering domain can be viewed as representing those sudden intuitive leaps often responsible for revolutionary advances in technology called significant novelty as well as those aspects of engineering not yet fully supported by engineering science that remain more an art than a science now all of you work in teams all of you work in teams right most of you work in teams you don't work in your job in your work workplace you work in teams now when you work in teams when you come across a problem have you seen some guy in your group ha macha i got a bright idea ha i got a good boss i got a good idea i come across such guys have you seen these guys now these are the guys who have creativity much more than the others now supposing there is a huge column in front of this or in the middle of this uh, auditorium would you like it now there will be a guy to say so that all the user types said so the one who designed this would have said matic makers design kalu matic but not a matter because he couldn't do anything else if he want to change this column it had costed millions so you know that he compromised and put a column right in the middle of a auditorium let's say that was just could not be eliminated if you have a guy who is creative what will he do he simply arrange the seats in a fancy way maybe you will lose little of seats but everybody could see the can see the they see the speaker so these are very creative ways of doing things so we need that any kind of engineers amongst us if we don't have that kind of engineers we don't have nice buildings in our country of course our architect architects help us sector b the intersection this this one the intersection of knowledge and need with both creative uh, and analytical capability so you have the engineering with has creativity and ethical skills both right so there are engineers like that who have most of both worlds this sector includes activities ranging from developing innovative products and processes or creating an innovative bridge design to developing a new control process for petrochemical production etc right now i am sure i am not sure how many of you have been to tokyo anybody have been to tokyo anybody anybody No, one, no one, no one in Tokyo, right? Try to go and get a ticket and go and see Tokyo, right? 
in tokyo there is a river cruise i am taking the river cruise there are about 38 bridges on this river and each bridge can carry the same load but designed in different way all engineering so these are the creative engineers they they came up with the concept okay in this bridge in this river we will design several bridges of various uh, models right they call it the museum of bridges what are the other sectors in the bar figure so those are outside the realm of engineering but having a lot of scientific knowledge sector a represent the intersection of analytical skills with societal needs outside the bounds of scientific knowledge this might includes economics and philosophy with the greatest philosopher on earth not buddha right greatest philosopher on earth now he had i'm sure he had lot of scientific knowledge right but he fulfill the needs of the society same with economics economics you have a lot of scientific knowledge right and meet the needs of society okay come on so sorry 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 societal needs outside bounds of scientific knowledge right so societal needs outside bounds of scientific knowledge but lot of analytical skills are required so but lord buddha would had lot of analytical knowledge in his mind to do something for the society sector 3 may come and compass r now on a sunday if you go to near the on the near the bharmadev park you see whole of artists street art i go there to enjoy myself if you do not have that kind of people this life will be boring no artists can you imagine so we need the artists in this society they are meeting a vital need of society Sector two may be used to represent those societal needs outside the bounds of scientific knowledge that require both analytical skills and creative skills. There are very few people with who have who have very little hair. I do not want to call the word bald. Who have little little hair. Just imagine this guy goes to a uh, shop that sells hair cream. You know this Buddha lady. He comes. I am at the. What a good good idea you made. So make balan. Make 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 cream make. මේ ක්‍රීම් එක හදලා තියෙන්නේ ඔබ ඔබ තුමාවනි කට්ටියට බයි right if you put this not only your hair will grow come back it will also improve your brain power have you heard this kind of people so the mudalalis traders they meet the needs of society and also they have this analytical skills in them right and lot of creativity they come up with all kinds of creative ideas so this sector 2 now they with them we have to work when they are the interface between us and the society so you got to work with them economists art artists and uh, traders and business people engineers cannot ignore the above very real issues in the society engineers are creative problem solver so what is electrical engineer here Hands up, hands up, hands up. Electrical engineers, you are half electrical engineer, right? Very few. You are the minority. Anyway, you all are the best because you are creating problem solvers. In the evening, you suddenly find you no know, way. You have bottle of beer, but no glass. So you are this. I am not going to refer to electrical engineers. The engineers are creative problem solvers. That's what you all are. At the beginning, you all patted your own back. I said, "We are clever guys, and this is what you are supposed to do: not to drink beer. Beer is drink is bad, huh? But you will get liver cancer if you drink beer. Not cancer liver liver ailments. Uh, I do not want to scare you, but uh, so drinking is bad. I drink. Anyway, what does the ec- now? I am getting to one more theory. Now, Abbott or the Accreditation Board of USA is perhaps the largest single engineering regulatory body in the world. Sorry, Abbott. That's what they say. 
So the accredited board of engineering and technology ABET, of USA identifies engineering as that profession in which knowledge of the mathematical and natural sciences gained by study, experience and practice is applied with judgment to develop ways to utilize economically the materials of forces of nature, materials and forces of nature for the benefit of mankind. So whichever way people define engineering, there are some key words, science, mathematics, natural uh, experience or this experience and practice are computed later, right? Economically, for the benefit of mankind. Right at the beginning I told you, if you are not prepared to work for the mankind, go to the hermitage. That's the place for you. You are there to meet the needs of society. You are there to meet the, uh, do something for the better mankind. Not my words, the largest engineering institution in the whole world. Regulatory body. Now, getting into one more theory, but this, I know, I'm sorry, this uh, slide is not at all uh, very clear. Now, this talk has three cages and it has, talks about three accords, right? Washington Accord, Sydney Accord and Dublin Accord. So it's all engineering. We sometimes forget that engineering doesn't, we think engineering in, in also only us. There are other engineers as well in the field. We don't want to even call them engineers. But the international jargon call them some kind of engineers. Right? All of us belong to this category called the Washington Accord graduates. Though you are not having a Washington Accord accredited degree, you are fit enough to be called equivalent to having this kind of attributes. Now I am not going to go into detail. I strongly suggest that you go and log on to the uh, site ipea.org or something. IPEA, right? IPEA stands for International Professional Engineering Alliance. Now that has only 17 full members and ISL is one of them. You should be very proud that you are trying to be a professional engineer in an institution that is worldwide recognized as international professional qualified engineers. Right? What are the 17 countries? USA, Canada, South Africa, England, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, South Korea, uh, Malaysia, Turkey, Russia, 15. ISL is the 16th country. India is the 17th country. That is how it came. I am telling you. We are a member of the IPEA. Don't forget that. So we got to live up to that standard. We got to live up to the standard. And we, are, we got the Washington Accord full signature status in the year 2014, on the 14th, 13th of June 2014, right, in Wellington, I was there. That was the crowning glory in my whole professional life, right. We were admitted to this elite club. Of course, we were IPA members even before that, but Washington record, getting Washington record is something really, really valuable. So the graduates should have these kind of attributes. Now, if you can't read, I'll read that. Apply knowledge of uh, mathematics, science, engineering fundamentals, and an engineering specialization as specified WK1 to WK4, that is Washington Accord knowledge attributes 1 to 4, respectively the solutions of complex engineering problems. So these are these what you call full four-year accredited degrees. Now there are most 
the whole of other three year uh, accreditation degrees and they fall into this category senior corps and there are two year engineering uh, degrees or diplomas they fall into this category dublin accord 432 now let me read the last line that is the most important thing the range of qualified and several attributed statements uses the notion complex engineering problems no as the cp complex engineering problems the second one is well defined engineering problems a third one is uh, sorry second one is uh, sorry broadly defined engineering problems and third one is well defined engineering problem right so these are categories of engineering that we are the professionally qualified engineers right the three engineering degree people can only tackle broadly defined engineering problem that means they know the problem very well before they attempt it and you guys remember that you patted your own back i said we are clever guys if you are clever guys you are now in a position to solve complex engineering problems now problems that you have never come across before that is why we want you to be engineers of high professional standing right but the well defined engineering problems are the third category they are called actually engineering technicians right now there are people who go to the field with a majan kit maybe they know exactly what to do when they go to the field maybe to oil some uh, bearing or change the oil or uh, do some change the fuse right they know exactly they have been told exactly what to do and these are the middle level category broad defined engineering problems and you guys you patted your own back right at the beginning and said we are clever guys and then that means you are able to solve complex engineering problems i'll come to this in a late, uh, later on i'm not going to go into detail except to draw your attention to only one category that's why i tell you this whole of information here please log on to ipa.com or something like that ipa website and study this carefully i recommend you that you study it carefully as soon as possible to find out who you are who am i as an engineer what am i supposed to do this is important right so the first one is called the depth of knowledge required the depth of cannot be resolved without in depth engineering knowledge at the level of one of one or more wk3 wk4 wk5 so and so forth wk always refers to washington accord knowledge attributes which allows a fundamentals based first principles analytical approach now i am going to be very 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 uh, tough not tough actually i am going to say something that you are not going to like i know most of you have come through the semester system right all of you is there anybody here who has not come through the semester system one year courses no no one everybody here one year course great guys like me the world do we have gone through the semester system right now i have a reason to say this i teach i was teaching for 30 years ago now it, i start teaching again after i graduate now i teach in a particular university i teach the mechanical engineers electrical fundamentals or electrical plant right so the, all electrical engineers know without complex numbers you can't do electrical engineering for sure it's like abc for electrical engineering complex numbers so first thing i ask is have you studied complex numbers yes 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 we are a level class sankirna sankhya correct you studied complex number a level now i am teaching the second and third years so second years if i ask them they say again i have studied in the first year but they study the basic principles of electricity the first year they study complex engine num number complex numbers again in the first year now when i ask the th third year they say i studied the a level first year and second year also now 
come on. They should know complex numbers very well. So I give them a sum. You have voltage, you have impedance called R plus Jx. Now J stands for I in complex numbers. I ask them to resolve this. Find the current. Believe me, believe me, you have to believe me. 80% of the students will put 400 volts divided by, by its, if I say 4 plus J, 3J, 4 plus 3. How can I expect them to knowing complex numbers at A level, first year, second year, to do that kind of stupid things? I give them a sum, 40 plus 30J, and they come out with the impedance 5 root 89. Exact answer. So I was so puzzled. From where do you get the 5 root 89? One point of told me, it comes out from the calculator programmable calculator. Now these people don't have the courtesy to resolve that 4 root 89 P50. Right? Now I come to my conclusion. Now don't get offended. Don't get offended. I am a schoolmaster. My conclusion is this. The semester system currently practiced in Sri Lanka is such that Right? You have to have a completely empty brain before you start your semester system. It's like a fish can on your head, totally lid out, empty. The teachers come, put, 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 within uh, 14 weeks. Put, 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 and you close the lid, study for two weeks, open the lid, go to the exam, put, put out, out, out. Put out everything. If you don't put out everything, you can't be ready for the next semester. Can you give me any other explanation? If that is not the explanation. So our students get used to loading your head, unloading everything at the exam and going free. You can't do that now. I am not blaming you. I am not blaming those guys. That is the way this our university structure has now turned into. I tell this openly to my university colleagues and they all agree. So now you got a chance to go to what I call here the fundamentals based first principle analytical approach. You never had the time to go into the fundamentals during your school uh, university days. Right? The fundamentals that some of us learned for a one year course, you have no time to be taught the fundamentals. Now that's why when I even still, when I get a problem, I go to the fundamentals. I go to the basic equations. Now most of the young engineers, they never know what the fundamentals are. I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. But now you are practicing engineers. Always start asking the question, why is it this way? Why, from where did this equation come? Let me go to the root of the equation. Please. If you don't do that, you have no future in engineering anymore. You have got all the time in the world now. You are not running for exams. You are doing some work. You don't need to worry about all the theories in the exams. Uh, the, the course, you got to study at least what you are doing now. Right? If you are doing structures, if you are doing numerical analysis, right? Go to the root cause and find out what is the theory behind this. Maybe you don't have time to do that in the campus. I don't blame you. But now you have the time, please go through them and try to understand the first principles, take the first principles approach and go to the fundamentals. That's very important. But I am not saying that, international engineers are saying that. So if you don't follow this, you become useless engineers in time to come. This is the time for you to study. You've got to do that. Right? Fortunately, we have the time to study during campus days.
what do we know need our engineers to be we want our engineers to listen when you are small we are told by our parents son you are given 2 years to listen and one mouth to talk with an open mind not just this thing with an open mind and not enough the speak up when required always be in a talking mood not to jabber but to talk sense and does not russian words but you must always speak sense my second lecture i will talk about how to speak sense i will teach you i will share with you how to speak sense right i have i have heard sometimes people speaking nonsense there was a seminar huge seminar i know how many of you attended uh, on monday morning big seminar you heard it the deputy minister was here for good 3 to 4 hours i had lunch with the deputy minister in the members lounge you know what he said pathetic pathetic what he said he will tell you that 99% of the seminar was superb 100% successful everybody spoke sense there are few people who did spoke nonsense right so very casually the deputy minister was asking there are some engineers who i like us no there are few of my friends who are with me there are few of the engineers who are like us no who don't understand so much like you are so please when you speak you have to speak sense you have to speak anyway but speak sense write well clearly and logical writing i am going to teach you how to write logical writing in whatever they write fiercely careful about accuracy now there was a boss of mine who always used to tell me when you are talking you can make mistakes you can even bullshit but when you write put it to come to writing you can be absolutely spot on correct why it can be produced anywhere unfortunately i don't have another i have another lecture on uh, ethics and everything but i don't have time to do that i want to either someone is doing that fears the careful about the curious where you can be taken to courts if you go to any other country like usa uk or any other developed countries most of the engineers and doctors are in the court houses fighting court battles but they are being sued unfortunately in sri lanka in sri lanka also there are few cases now coming up so don't make false suits good manners courteous but now look at your people my god how courteous you are you are all smiling nicely seated you if i want you to speak you won't speak so good well mannered you got to be well mannered and courteous you are dressed well if i have time i show you how to dress smartly i have small present on that if i have time i'll show you that dress smartly and be smartly dressed to suit the occasion now i don't expect you to come here smartly because you this was a evening lecture so some of you have come in casuals no problem i am not getting offended by you but if you go like that for a meeting then you know you can't go there so you have to smartly dress for the occasion read well there such a lot of media news channels journals technical reports now my dear friends whatever you may have kept in your mind maybe some of it you will forget but this you can't forget what i am telling you right now i have been telling all the engineers under me engineering is at least 50% working 50% reading supposing you go and uh, supervise a construction site if you do not know the contract uh, the contract out and out the specification out and out how do you know the specification unless you read it how do you know the contract unless you read it but these are not simple documents huge documents so my dear friends when you are small our parents taught us to read 
Unfortunately, I have what maybe 30, 40 years of gap between me and you, most of you, right? When you were small, you had a tap, tap to do, computer games to play, TV to watch. You are not got used to reading. Even if you want to read it in the tap, I don't care. If you are reading in the computer, I don't care. I read most of the things on the computer now. But you've got to read it. You've got to read it. Unless you read it, you don't understand. It doesn't get into your register in your mind. If it doesn't get into your mind, how can you get super somewhere? So if you want to go and do the field work, fine. But 50% of the time, as much time that you spend in the field, devote for reading. We have no escape. Work hard. Are you ready to face a challenge? Are you? Yes. Are you? Yes. Good. Are you? Yes. Are you? Yes. Good. You are ready to face a sumo. But there are, there are two laws. If you want to win this bout, there are two laws. The first law says, If I can't, who can? First of all, believe in yourself. Right? If I can't win this game, who can win this game? That's the first thing that you keep in mind. If you believe in that, you will win. If you believe that, you will win. Surely win. Right? And immediately after winning the battle, bout, you know, winning the battle and the bout, the resting game, you must be humble enough to say, you must be humble enough to say, if I can, who can't? If I can, who can't do that? So what does it mean? Two simple things, but the second one gives an onus on you to ensure that your colleague can do that, your subordinate can do that, your superior can do that, your peers can do that. Maybe you have come across a very difficult intricate bridge design with very difficult loading. You have overcome that design and you must teach the others to do the same way. If I can, who can't? I got to this. All those I have the same education that I have. So they also can do it. So have that humbleness. Now getting into the more practical things. So my theory part is over. Okay? And let's do a small exercise. Now I am the general. You remember? General, right? That means no turning back. Right? Are you prepared? Are you prepared? You said you are prepared. Are you prepared? I think I'm buying them. <laughs> then buy them. I am the general, you have no escape, all the doors are locked, right? I am the general, okay. Now you have to do what I am saying, you have to do exactly what I am saying, okay, got it? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. I'm sure you can raise higher. You can raise it higher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, you guys. Come on. Come on. None of you saw. None of the others saw what you did. Come, come, come. Please demonstrate what you did. Come, sit there, sit there. Exactly. Okay, put your hands down. Oh, easy. Sit there, sit there. Come, no, sit there. Yeah. Okay, raise your hand. Higher. Higher. What do you do? I gave an instruction. You didn't do you didn't follow. What is your name? Dilesh. Huh? Dilesh. What's your name? Dilesh. Dilesh. Yeah. Uh, working? Uh, I got my own business. Huh? I'm working for dad. Your dad? Yes. What is your profession? 
Oh, we do high voltage maintenance. Good, great. Give a round of applause. Dilesh, huh? Yes, Dilesh. Dilesh. Well done, well done. Thank you. This is the way you have to think out of the box. There are no easy solutions. You can find solutions being in your comfort zone. All of you decide to wait in the comfort zone. He decided to get out of the seat. Right? So when you want to find solutions, you have to get out of the way. Out of from your comfort zone and find solutions. Okay. Now the professional review exam. I usually test the candidates on two things. Professional experience and knowledge on general issues faced by engineers and the society they work in. So most of you are doing only the B paper. Some of you are doing the B paper and the uh, PR, the whole thing, the interview and the A paper, right? So we, we trust you on all these things. Your professional experience, we know that you have got your engineering, basic engineering education. We are going to trust you on that. But we are going to trust your professional experience and the knowledge on general issues faced by engineers and the society they work in. You, know, you are going to work for society. It comprises of three things. Three things. The viva voce, it's a Latin word. We call it viva. It simply means viva voce. It simply means in Latin, say it in words. Say it in words. All what you know, say it in words. Got it in your head? So when you go for the interview, all what you got to do is to say it in words. What do you know? And if your wife or husband tells you don't talk, you are fair. Right? You have to say it in words. It says, uh, simply means interview aimed at assessing one's knowledge. So knowledge will be tested by the words that you are going to express. The second thing is the A paper, which is prepared specifically to examine the candidate on his specific experience. So A paper is set immediately after the interview. Right? I just said it a day or two later. Right? And that again you have to put it in writing what you know. And what you told the uh, examiners what you know. And you are not supposed to be examined on anything else that you did not tell. Right? I know some examiners try to test their knowledge with you. That's wrong. Where does it? That's wrong. And we have been teaching our examiners not to do that. The examiners are supposed to test you on the knowledge that they extracted from you during the interview and during your, all the documents that you have supplied. Your experience report, your design report. But we have all the right to ask anything that. So don't write anything that you don't know. Don't write anything that you have not done. <coughs> Some people do that. And we, we can easily catch you. The third one for which you are coming to be uh, coming here to uh, listen to me or the B paper. It's aimed at testing the candidate's knowledge on engineers' role in society, which I've been talking all this time, and the general affairs. What do we examine at uh, ISL B paper? Now, ISL B paper has arisen. Uh, very similar to a <coughs> paper called the Engineering Society <coughs> carried out by the Engineering Council of UK. And I remember most of the people who used to do the IE exams, IEC exams, they used to fail on the Engineering Society paper. <coughs> all the papers are marked in England. And they all fail. Very few people passed. But they expect you to have very wide knowledge of the society. So sometimes our culture doesn't uh, match with their culture, so we fail. But fortunately, I'm sitting for the ESL exam. And it's slightly different. We do test your knowledge on society, in your society, but slightly different, and we have made it very easy for you. We are ISL calling the B paper. And we test the knowledge on general issues faced by engineers and the society they're working. So, general issues that the engineers face. By the work in the society. So once again, if you cannot pass this, 
you are definitely not fit to be an engineer. From all what I said, therefore you are not fit to be an engineer. But we have a syllabus which is very wide, very good for you, but also bad. But it is very wide, there can be very specific questions in your field. And maybe only one. So which means you have to have a wide knowledge of the wider fields. Right? And relate to day-to-day -day issues we engineers face in society. So most of the questions are related to day to the issues we face in uh, we as engineers face in society. How many of you have looked at this IES and B paper? Put your hands up, your hands up. B paper, have you seen? Yeah, one, two. It's a very poor performance. Very poor performance. You are going to sit the B paper in two months' time. You have not even looked at the past B papers. So from this point until you see the B paper, please take up all the papers, try to attempt it yourself if you want to pass the B paper. Right? And I give open intention to everybody. I give that to you also. If you dare to write an answer and send me by email, I'll make sure that I, I correct it and send it back to you. Not many people do that. I do that. So if you want to get it corrected, say to me, if I am not a specialist in that field, I will give it to a person who, who can do the correction and send the comments back to you. Uh, have you gone through some of the lectures done last year? All the lectures are in the web. How many of you have gone through the lectures? Listen to the lectures. See? One, two, three. Very poor. Very poor. You have wealth of knowledge in those lectures. You know, sometimes I follow those lectures, but they are some of, they are coming from very eminent people. I'll talk about that later. How are we aware of the structure of the B paper? How many of you are aware of the structure of the B paper? How many of you are aware of the structure of the B paper? Anybody? No one? Come on. Why did you raise about the B paper? You have gone through. One. Only one or two. One. Very poor performance. I'll tell you that much. You are very much ill prepared. Right? You got to prepare yourself for B paper. So please go through the structure of B paper. I'm going to talk about that. But again, take some papers and look at the structure. Have you gone through the past papers? No need to ask you. <laughs> no one has gone through. Why don't you put some copy? We are used to putting copy, right? So when you come out of the campus, you forget Kupi. Get together, a few of you. But most of these are very general, general uh, questions. And maybe one or two of you have some special uh, knowledge on some of the questions, which others may not have. And I said that you uh, have a group with civil, mechanical, electrical, mechatronics, uh, uh, electronics, and all kinds of people around. So you can have very diverse opinions coming out from the people. Discuss these things in a very in friendly, informal environment. The BPM structure and the emphasis is emphasis on communication skills. Prime objective is to test your communication skills. I have no time to go through the fundamentals of this uh, need, right? I have still another lecture on that, but. This is not the time to do that. Communication skills we are going to test. And the second most important thing, the code of conduct. Code of conduct of engineers. Yesterday I was, uh, I was interviewing a candidate for international professional engineers. I asked him, have you read the code of conduct? It's a long time ago. So. Just catching and saying, long time ago, sir. You all belong to the four major religions, right? Maybe Buddhists, maybe Islamists, maybe Hindus, maybe Christians. How well are you versed in the Panchasile? Pansil? How well are you versed in the Bhagavad Gita? How well are you versed in the Dasapanatha or the Ten Commandments? 
How well are you versed in again Pancasila in the Islam, right? You all know this by heart. If you are an engineer, you have to know the code of conduct by heart. By heart. You got to know the code of conduct by heart. It's as important as that. So I prepared the code of conduct in a pocket size like a calendar and printed in all three languages, Sinhal, Tamil and English. In whatever language you are familiar with, please get a copy from the secretariat, read it and understand it. But this particular thing has only the codes. And there are eight codes and there's a special lecture on that. There are only eight codes in the code of conduct. And each code has about three to nine or ten rules that govern the code that it, that describes that particular code. And I'll assure you, I'll assure you, it's one of the most difficult documents to read and understand. If you simply read the code, it's just a code. You can't, most of you can't understand. Pansil Pada Paha, Pali Basa, then not the moment, then next. Sanskrit, then next. Bhagavad Gita, then Sanskrit, then next. Islam Bhakti Kange, Quran, then next. Arai Basa, then next. Samara Kati, then next. Those days the Christians, everything was written in Latin. Nobody understood Latin. It's like that. The code is written in English. For us, more, more, very difficult to understand. But you got to understand. You got to understand. First point, you got to understand. Then there is a good uh, way of understanding that. Then there are, each code has about three or four or five or six, seven, eight rules. So if you don't understand the code, read the rules. Rules you understand, isn't that? The highway code you don't know, but you all know that you have to drive on the left hand side of the road. That's the rule. The highway code. You may not remember the entire highway code, but you remember the rules. You can't cross the single uh, line, or you can't cross the double lines. You all know the rules. When you see a pedestrian car, you stop. You know the rules. So it's easy to find the rule, read the rules and understand. So that is the plus point, the good part of the story. So please read the code of conduct and the rules. So the written paper B would be of three hours duration and will consist of two sections. Section one will be on engineering ethics and code of conduct. They go hand in hand. If you are, know your engineering ethics, you have a good code of conduct. While section 2 will be on topics based on issues taking place in society, both local and foreign, and in other spheres other than engineering, that has direct impact on society. I, I told you that, that people surrounding us, economists, business people, artists, right? You have to understand them. So there will be topics related to that. A topic related to economics. I'll, I'll show you the topics later on. Out of the questions in section 2, but this is not a rule, nah? generally. Out of sec questions in section 2, part of the questions, I will not say half, part of the questions will be on topics of general nature. Where specific knowledge about the area subject to the question is not necessarily required. Now, you are not specialist in economics. Unless you have done economics. You are specialist in foreign policy, unless you have done foreign policy. You are specialist in, uh, let's say, uh, uh, trade or commerce. You are specialist. But you must have general knowledge on those things. So, in depth knowledge is not required. Candidates are usually asked to analyze, express opinions, comment, giving views, elaborate, etc on certain issues that are taking place in society. Now, I'll give you an example. I said questions, sort of questions in this. 
I express an opinion and I ask them to give their opinion against my opinion. But nobody knew it was my question. Anyway. And that particular exam, the person who got the highest mark, that was 80 out of 100, was the person who diametrically opposed my view. So we examiners won't cut marks if you give a logical, analytical answer that you can justify. That's what I told you. You don't need to have in-depth knowledge of the subject. You are given a problem, you have to relate that, you have to react to that problem in the best way possible using your own thinking. So you don't cut marks, even if you don't agree with us. All that is required is good analytical thinking. Okay? A candidate who is generally sensitive to what is taking place around him and who can form his opinion about them should be able to answer these questions without difficulty. So you must be able to have your own opinions. Highly opinionated people. If you ask a person, why is it raining machat? Danne machat? Danne machat? mitra chanakne. You should know. You should know. Right? Danne machat? You should be able to find your opinion, uh, have your own opinion. The other half of questions will be, I would say half, other part of the questions will be on specific pre-identified areas. Right? Maybe areas that are directly related to the work that you are doing. So you have two sets of questions. As I told you, the very wide, we have about 10 or 12 questions. I, I want to cut it short, but nobody will allow me to cut short number of questions. So there will be only one question maybe perhaps that you can answer. That is the your subject area. But three questions you have to answer, uh, other two questions you have to answer on general matters. So you have to be very well versed in general matters. So only a subject area won't do. Candidates are required to answer four questions, selecting one question from section one and three from section two. Candidates can select any mix of questions irrespective of the type in section 2. So section 2 has no restriction. Only thing is that you have to answer three questions in section 2. You can select any combination. If you want to answer all in one subject, no problem as there are long as there are six questions. Right? We are going to penalize you. But only one question from section 1. Each question will carry 25 marks and the pass mark will be 50. ISL will be testing you on, I keep on telling communication skills. The art of communicating clearly, concisely and intelligibly in English. I am going to do another lecture with you on English and how to speak well and how to write well. The art of structuring an answer, the beginning, the body and the conclusion. Presentation and the flow. Transmission, transition from one point to another. Proper use of paragraphs. Writing grammatically correct English. Spellings and writing answers to the point. Now I have serious problem. I have been marking these papers for the, so many years. Uh, recently I saw a paper where the person started writing the answer very well. In fact, the person before starting the answer on the first page wrote the mind map. Mind map? Mind map? The first time I heard about mind map. How the mind works in structuring the question. I thought fantastic. I am going to read a fantastic uh, answer. I turned to the sec second page. There was only one sheet written. Where there are four pages at least in the book. Nonsense. Mind map was written so well that person forgot to write the answer. I, I can't give you in marks. Then there was another question about uh, conflict resolution and uh, 
the methods of concrete reliance was I can't remember the exact question. So the person uh, were conflict resolution, but I think the, the examiner gave a question, put in that person in a particular scenario and how you use the conflict resolution techniques to analyze the problem. He discussed everything about conflict resolution, how to carry out a, uh, how to carry out a meeting. Now carrying, having a meeting is a way of conflict resolution. And this person wrote the entire answer how to conduct a meeting. Now that's not the question that is asked. Alright? So be very careful. Try to understand the question very correctly. However much I tell you, a lot of people make various, very serious mistakes in understanding the question. Uh, ethics and code of conduct. So please refer the IZ publication. It's available in the web. It's available also in the book form. Issues affecting the society, social, economic, political, gender issues, behavioral sciences, <coughs> national development, industry, commerce, role and responsibility of engineers as a member of the society and as a professional, public perception of engineers, strengths, opportunities and threats to the profession, role of the civil society, environmental issues, emerging technologies, international affairs, government's, government's national policy and Sri Lankan economy, major infrastructure projects taken, taking place and planned for the future. So the menu is very wide. Menu is very wide. The good part of the question is, uh, story is, you get a wide choice. But the bad part is, since very wide, you may study one part of the thing and no questions may ever come from that part. So that is the bad part of the challenge. So you, see, you have to have very good general knowledge on most of these subjects. Also listen to the lectures on specific topics arranged by IESL from time to time and in the series of lectures and last few years on which few questions will be directly based upon. So listen to all these questions, uh, lectures, either in person in Colombo or in the web. Please listen to them again. So some of the questions will be directly related coming from these lectures. Why do students fail in the BBM? Now you may be thinking that I am joking, right? I am not joking. The real reason. Students do not work hard and prepare adequate. Now you spite. Nobody is prepared. Even today, nobody is prepared. For you have about two months. So prepare yourself to meet the requirements as you did in the school. You study hard in school, right? University. You cram, cram, cram. If you did the ISL exam, you cram. They do not read technical literature. I keep on telling you the word reading. You got to read technical literature. How much of documents come to our uh, table? Sometimes you may think it's useless. It's not at all useless. How many journals we, uh, journals we contribute to? We get so many journals. We get newspapers. Right? So read them. National newspapers, international journals are simply not uh, topics other than their own area of specialization like the frog in the well. The problems faced by the candidates. The problem faced by the candidates and their weaknesses have been identified to be the following. Now this is, we have, I put them together after discussing with some of my friends who do the uh, marking. Right? First and foremost, everybody is complaining of very poor reading habits. You know nothing sometimes of a very simple and obvious thing. Now, I am not talking of the Laplace theory or I am not talking of Fourier analysis or I am not talking of numerical analysis or this and that if we aim or something. I am talking of day-to-day -day things. They don't read. Lack of knowledge on common affairs, especially politics, economics, social issues. These days, there are a lot of talk about the etc and all kinds of things. 
How much do you know about these things? Right? And the biggest problem is the inability to correctly understand the question. Inability to structure a response to a question. Now, I think you have heard this story before. You heard the story of the young boy who was asked to write an essay on the horse. Horse? You know the horse, right? So the boy has never seen a horse. He knows that in a picture that he has that horse. So he starts writing the essay. My father has a horse. Every day this uh, my father brings the horse home and ties the horse in the mango tree in front of our garden. The mango tree is very big. There are many branches. It bears fruits twice a year. Mango fruits are very tasty. They are very nutritious. And sometimes my mother ties a rope to the mango tree and has the clothes. Now mind you gentlemen and ladies, don't be surprised. I am getting answers like this. I am getting answers like this. You got to believe me. If you don't believe, I will show you some, picture, some examples next time. Right? I will show you some examples next time. Inability to structure a response to a question. Inability to write clearly and concisely problems with English language. Very serious. I will show you some examples at the next lecture. To overcome these problems, a series of lectures are conducted about three months before the professional review examiner. That is what you are doing now. ISN hopes that this series of lectures and interaction with the eminent resource persons, that is what I told you, got to speak up, speak up, ask questions. We have put out a very uh, eminent panel of experts will help candidates to overcome their weaknesses, the very experienced people, before the examination and enable them to face the paper with greater degree of confidence. So ISL will do its part. What do you have to do? One, attend these lectures as much as possible. If you miss it, look them up in the website. Read articles of national interest, especially on engineering issues and issues that impact the national economy, international relations, environment, etc. Attempt to pass, attempt the past papers and write answers to those questions and check with the resource persons if they would like to give a, give a feedback. So next time when, when the resource persons come, you ask them, sir, if, I, if we write some of the answers to the questions, will you answer? Some of them will say yes, some of them will not say yes. If they say no, uh, if they don't say yes, send them to me. I'll somehow get them to be corrected. Right? If you are not quite competent in English, please follow an English course. English is not our mother tongue. Is anybody who is English your mother tongue? From the day that you were born, you were talking English? No one. So English is not our mother tongue. So please study English. So these are the topics in general, and this will be the website. So go and read it. I am not going to take time going through the enormous syllabus. Enormous syllabus. National policy on Sri Lankan economy. Huge number of topics. International affairs. Role of the UN charters, superpowers, neo-colonials, main international affair, conflict zones. Where are the conflict zones now in the world? Where do we have conflicts? Yeah. Syria. Yeah. Uh, Iraq. Huh? You said Iraq? No. No one said Iraq. Huh? Huh? Gaza. Gaza. Not now. Not Israel. Sometime ago, yes, Israel. Iraq. Syria and a few, few other spots, right? Yeah. Yemen sometimes, Sudan, and Sudan I think is country is over. So learn about the GET, the WTO, SAFTA, SAFTA. Learn about these things. Human rights issues, quality management systems, there will be lecture on quality management systems, right? 
engineering profession behavioral science and social sciences last time we could not offer this lecture we are going to make some arrangement to uh, have someone to do the lecture now another deviation i first spoke about the theory i spoke about the structure of the b paper now i'm going to speak about some practical examples of how we work and look at these pictures and tell me who is responsible okay i want answers who is responsible for this who is responsible for this who ha huh? electrical engineers we did not do our job properly so the factory is gutted in fire say Who is responsible for this? Ah, huh? not really. The engineers are responsible for regulations in the municipalities, in the private sabas. Maybe they are civil engineers. You can't put the blame on anybody else but us engineers. Who is responsible for this? Most certainly structural engineers. This is one of the worst. Engineering disasters in the whole world. Thousand one hundred people lost their lives in Dhaka in 2013. You know these uh, Bengalis are very similar to Sri Lankans. Very similar. If they look, they look almost similar. They walk the way similar. They talk similar, but with a different accent. Thousand one hundred lives lost. Hundred and one thousand people watching. Just like Sri Lanka. If there is any problem, what do you see in Sri Lanka? Large number of people watching, right? So our brothers are watching. Looks funny. In fact, they are on a, in, a, in a weekend newspaper. They also very uh, uh, dirty joke on this, right? So this came up in all the uh, Sri Lanka newspapers with a joke. Maybe because it's in China. Funzu, right? Now, can we laugh at others? Where is this? Where is this? Have you noticed? Are they guys? Any are they guys? Nobody. Nobody from are they? Do you know where this? Darmegal, right? So we can't laugh at others. And once again, lot of people watching. Kuda tihana balangi na vesse. Hari joli apni to balangi ne kar. Now the problem is, if technologists, as Sydney called, technicians, Dublin called, try to do the job for the engineers who are supposed to be qualified to be Washington called graduates, this will happen. That's why I have been telling you for the last one or four five minutes. What is your role? Try to understand your role. Try to define yourself, who you are. There are well-defined documents. So that is what you got to be. But the problem is, are we prepared to face the challenge? You said yes. Can we confidently say that we engineers in Sri Lanka will not face this ever? That's why we are taking so much of trouble to put you through a very difficult task of PR. I told everybody, let's make the PR as tough as possible. Why is that? One day Kennedy was asked, "Why try to send people to moon? Right? Why why launch this Apollo mission? Why try to send people to the space and try to send people to the moon?" What is the answer Kennedy gave? Everybody knows. You are trying to send people to moon, not because it's easy. We are trying to send people to moon, not because it's easy. And we are trying to make you professional engineers, not because it's easy. It has got to be very tough. You come out through a tough fight, then you will be a good engineer. That's what we want you to be. 
So can ISL assure that our child engineers are in a position to avoid this kind of disasters? The answer is in your hands. How is our general knowledge? Right? I would ask, ask you. What is SIPA? What is SIPA? Anybody? Where is your general knowledge? Where is your general knowledge? Anybody knows what SIPA is? Anyone who want to guess? A SIPA, Pava, Sumudu, Kamanyan. A SIPA, Pava, 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 yeah, come, 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 come. Okay, stand up and tell. Yeah. Some uh, great technical diving it was the previous one, it was supposed, supposed to sign with India. And yes, but what does SIPA stand for? Okay, at least you are fifty percent all right. What is what does SIPA stand for? Nobody knows. Got to go and study these things. So, right? Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. What is NATO? No action talk only. Correct? No action talk only. What is NATO? Huh? Are you from the forces? Yes. I knew that you are from the forces. North Atlantic Treaty Organization. What get? Get to get. Because what is GATT? It's an instrument of the WTO. What is WTO? Ah, World Trade Organization. Good. So, what is GATT? How many of you import things? How many of you import things? You import things. You don't know that. If you import anything to the country, you have to follow this GATT. What is GATT? What do you get? You got to know these things. General agreement of trade and tariff. Right? SAPTA. I have also forgotten. <laughs> okay, what is SAPTA? Huh? What is SAPTA? Come on. You know? No. You know? No one knows. Sapta. 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 Kanya. Kandukari. Haradhi. Sapta. 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 Nobody knows. You, all of you will be short. Nothing but short. That's the only excuse I can tell you. South Asian Preferential Trade Agreement. Right? Now you should be able to tell what this is. What is Sapta? Huh? South Asian Free Trade Agreement. Now, this are the statistics. Now, you said you are not clever guys. See what the clever guys are doing. March 2013, only 46% pass. Can we accept that? Can we accept that? September 2013, 46% pass. March 2014, big improvement, 57. September, 53%. March, 56%. September 2015, 63%. Unfortunately, in March this year, this stopped to 56% again. This is not good. You all are clever guys. You patted your own back. I said we are clever people. If you are clever, how can this be the performance? It is only because of the reasons that I said before. You don't read. You don't understand the question. You give the question, where are you going? Coconuts in the basket. 
You understand that? Where I going, Congress is the mask. What are they giving? Huh? Cold and the Malay board. Where I going, Congress is the mask. So, this is no laughing matter. You got to change this statistics. Now, how many of you have uh, faced exams? You have faced so many exams now. How many of you? How many of how many exams have you faced in your life up to now? Any guess? How many exams? From grade one to uh, uh, finally in the exam, uh, 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 university, and maybe after that also, I do C one and various things. Maybe hundreds of exams. Maybe five hundred plus, for sure. They close one thousand. You have faced exams. But look at the silly things that people do. To write the correct question number, there have been many, many instances. I do a lot of moderation. Where it was last, last, last exam. We sent a question, where the question number was not written, to one particular examiner called examiner. A. He looked at the question and said, This question is not mine. Send it back to the IES. We read it again and said to the examiner B, thinking that he is the one who has set the exam. Question. Examiner B also read this and said, No, this does not belong to It looks like it belongs to A. So finally, it went back to A and said, oh, Maybe it's mine. This is an absolute fact. Absolute fact. So please write the correct question number. Otherwise, it goes to the wrong examiner for marking. And now I have told, give zero marks if you get a, a question written without a uh, number. Okay, no marks. How good the task is. To write the correct index number in all pages. Some people don't write the index numbers. There are cases who do not write the index number at all. To write the correct question numbers to which they have answered. So that's the summary sheet that you have to say. These are the questions that you have attempted. They feel it wrong. Proper handwriting. I'll show you some examples next time if I have time. Impossible to read. Impossible to read. Not that my handwriting is good. My handwriting is bad. But the whole problem is the way that you all have been taught to write letters. When we were small, we were told to write the letters in a particular way. D has to write written in a particular way. A has to write written in a particular way. Somebody write A like this. A is not like this. A is like this. So if you write the correct structure of the word, letter, those who are used to reading a lot of uh, matter, a handwritten matter, even if they can't, uh, the handwriting is bad, they know what letter you have. I see all kinds of letters. So please check your handwriting and write the correct the correct uh, structure of the letter. Some uh, some exam gives zero marks, huh? Mind you that some exam gives just zero marks if your handwriting is not good. Read the instructions clearly before start writing. Some answer five questions. Why should you answer five questions? And the biggest problem I have seen this several times. You have been asked to write, answer only one question from section 1. Some people answer two questions. But these are professional engineers. So the coverage of the themes, I did the introduction to B paper, then code of ethics, very experienced. I hope he can come and lecture now. He had some operation in his leg. Russell De Silva. Uh, NGA Society on Prabodh Jinnah Sena. He will cover most of the things that I said also. Uh, we have a, uh, some few lectures on the environment. Uh, now Dr. Saman Kalegwa, I am sure he can get this time. He is one of the best people who can talk of economics. Don't miss that lecture. International Affairs, one of the most illustrated uh, ambassadors of Sri Lanka has ever produced. Nihal Rodrigo on International Affairs. Uh, 
physical infrastructure that we was of our senior engineers emerging technologies quality assurance uh, energy infrastructure it infrastructure management last time it was not offered but we this time we'll offer it and finally i'll do something on let's make sense when you talk and write okay so time is just about 5 minutes to 7 any questions any questions you are free to ask me any questions no questions nobody want to ask any questions if you want to go home fast as possible okay thank you for listening